Greetings, welcome to this new video about Thevenin's theorem. In this video, I will demonstrate the application of Thevenin's theorem through a step by step example explanation. By following along carefully, you will gain a clear understanding of how to apply Thevenin's theorem to solve practical problems. Let's dive in and begin with the solve the problem number 10. Let's consider this network consisting of four resistors labeled R1 through R4 as well as one independent source Vs. Additionally, we can observe the presence of a dependent source, especially a voltage controlled current source. The question now is to find the Thevenin's equivalent with respect to terminals A and B. Let's move on to the solution by applying the Thevenin's theorem between terminals A and B, we can replace this circuit with a voltage source in series with a resistor, which will be denoted as VTH and RTH. I will start first with the determination of the Thevenin's resistance. This step can be done by removing all independent sources in the circuit which means the voltage source will be replaced by a short circuit and the current sources will be replaced by an open circuit. But we see the presence of uh, the dependent source. However, the idea is to excite the network with the voltage VO connected between terminals A and B, and we can set VO is equal to 1 volt to make the calculation easy. Now our goal is to, to find the current I.O. through the terminals. Once we establish the current I.O., the RTH can be calculated by V.O. over I.O. In order to calculate the current I.O., I will apply the nodal analysis method. But first I will consider I1 is the current through the resistor R1, I2 is the current through the resistor R2, and I3 is the current through the resistor R3, and I4 is the current through the resistor R4. By applying Kirchhoff's current law at node 1, we can write I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to 0. Now by applying Kirchhoff's current law at node 2, we can write I3 plus 0 0.5 times Vx uh, plus Io minus I4 is equal to 0. And according to Ohm's law, Vx is equal to R2 times I2 is equal to 6 times I2. And if we replace Vx here in the previous equation, we obtain I, I3 plus 3 times I2 plus Io minus I4 is equal to 0. Now, according to Ohm's law, I1 is equal to negative V1 over R1. V1 is the voltage at node 1. And I2 is equal to V1 over R2. I3 is equal to V1 minus VO over R3. And I4 is equal to VO over R4. Now by substituting A, B and C in 1, we can write negative V1 over R1 minus V1 over R2 minus V1 minus VO over R3 is equal to 0. And if we replace the resistors and the voltage VO with their numerical values and we continue simplifying this equation, we obtain negative 6 times V1 plus 3 is equal to 0. Now by substituting B, C and D in 2, we can write V1 minus VO over R3 plus 3 times V1 over R2 plus IO minus VO over R4 is equal to 0. And if we replace VO and the resistors with their numerical values and we continue simplifying this equation, we obtain 10 times V1 plus 10 times IO minus 6 is equal to 0. 
from equation 3, V1 is equal to 3 over 6 is equal to 0 0.5 volt. And from equation 4, IO is equal to 6 minus 10 times V1 over 10. And if we replace V1 with 0 0.5, we get IO is equal to 0 0.1 amps. Now we can calculate RTH, RTH is equal to VO over IO. And if we replace VO and IO with their numerical values, we obtain finally RTH is equal to 10 ohms. After finishing the determination of the Thevenin's Resistance will proceed to calculate the Thevenin's voltage. The Thevenin's voltage is basically the open circuit voltage calculated between terminals A and B. To find the open circuit voltage VOC, I will apply the nodal analysis method and I will consider I1 is the current through the resistor R1. I2 is the current through the resistor R2, I3 is the current through the resistor R3, and I4 is the current through the resistor R4. By applying Kirchhoff's current law at node 1, we can write I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to 0. Now by applying Kirchhoff's current law at node 2, we can write I3 plus 0 0.5 times Vx minus I4 is equal to 0. And according to Ohm's law, Vx is equal to R2 times I2 is equal to 6 times I2. And if we replace Vx in the previous equation, we obtain I3 is plus 3 times I2 minus I4 is equal to 0. And according now to Ohm's law, I1 is equal to Vs minus V1 over R1 and I2 is equal to V1 over R2 and I3 is equal to V1 minus VOC over R3 and I4 is equal to VOC over R4 where V1 is the, the node voltage at node 1. Now by substituting A, B and C in 1, we can write Vs minus V1 over R1 minus V1 over R2 minus V1 minus VOC over R3 is equal to 0. And if we replace the voltage and the resistor, resistors with their numerical values and we continue simplifying this equation, we obtain negative 6 times V1 plus 3 VOC plus 100 is equal to 0. Now by substituting B, C and D in 2, we can write V1 minus VOC over R3 plus 3, plus 3 times V1 over R2 minus VOC over R4 is equal to 0. And if we replace the resistors with their numerical values and we continue simplifying this equation, we obtain 10 times V1 minus 6 VOC is equal to 0. Now by performing 4 plus 2 times 3, we derive one equation in terms of uh, V1. That means V1 is equal to 200 over 2 is equal to 100 volt. And from equation 4, we, we can write VOC is equal to 10 times V1 over 6. And if we replace V1 with its numerical value, we obtain VOC is equal to 166.67 volt. That means VTH is equal to 166.67 volt. After completing the calculations, I perform a simulation using SPICE to verify our results. Now let's proceed to the SPICE environment. Here is our network's drone in SPICE simulator. This is, is the original circuit and this is, is the equiv uh, Thevenin's equivalent with respect to terminals A and B. I connected a load to both the original circuit and uh, the equivalent circuit and, uh, and simulate their 
behavior. Let's move on to analysis. This uh, analysis calculate nodal voltages. We can see here that the voltage across the load resistor is equal to 15.15 volt in the original circuit and is equal to 15.15 volt in the Thevenin's equivalent with respect to terminals A and B. Up on simulation, we can observe that the two circuits have identical behavior when we connect a load between terminals A and B. This outcome confirms the validation of our calculation. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you have any question, do not hesitate to contact me by email or leave a comment under this video and I will answer you as soon as possible. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and share. See you next time in another video about Thevenin's theorem. Take care and bye-bye.